Greetings, my friends, and thank you for rejoining me here, Mr. Mocha Lover, of course, uh, as we come and continue to play in TNO. So, actually, looking at this, this looks really good. The Iberian Union looking really nice in North Africa. And then we have the Thrupes, Legionnaires de Algeria here as well. That looks... Ah, uh, this looks just awesome. Just Yves Garin Sakarak. Sarak? Ah, what a great person. Great, great person. I love it. I love seeing North Africa like this. It just it just warms my heart. But anyways, I hope you're having a good day. Right now, we're still fighting a slight war in South Africa, which we're actually doing pretty well with, even though our tanks aren't doing super well. And we'll keep an eye on this, but we've got some comms to go through as we struggle a little bit down here. Down here in the good place of South Africa. Let's see, our soldiers are up there. Oh, the tanks were defeated, whatever. Uh, I'm going to let these infantry guys, these divisions, move around by codifying the council's powers. The fundamental law of the organic state gives the Iberian Council numerous powers, including the power to tax, to pass laws, and the power to oversee the operations of lower-ranking government organizations. This is far greater than any power that the formerly weak council has had in the past, and so may require some reasonable limitations to keep them in check. The question now facing the two caudillos is exactly how much their de jure powers the council should be able to exercise in practice. Minimize, make reformism less relevant. Give them a chance to exert some power. Giving the council full powers will make reformism stronger. Honestly, I kind of want to just go with minimize them, but we want to save the union, and I think we have to reform as much as possible, so unfortunately, it seems like we're going to have to... Fortunately or unfortunately, uh, we got to add some money to the dam, but we also go with more conservative. We're 29 out of 100, so now it's going to be 31. Not actually much much bigger of a difference. So a couple comments. Um, we got to finish the dam fast. Yeah, I, I definitely want to finish this as fast as possible. Let's see. I mean, we can't do very much right now because we have literally four things going on at the same time. I could raise worker salaries, but they're kind of okay. But the cost is more. Security, the cost is more. And upgrade the cranes, which will just lower the maintenance for the dam, which is a good thing. But I think we're doing actually really well in the dam. I want to get done as fast as possible because apparently, as according to somebody, bad things can happen if we don't finish the dam. So I don't want to see that. I don't want to hear that. Uh, I don't want to know about that, but I kind of do. Anyways, uh, let's see. Go reformist. Yeah, we'll try to go as reformist as fast as possible. Uh, the Aryan Brotherhood. Uh, Aryan Brotherhood, how are you doing over there? Cheetah's looking nice and thick. Holy cow. These guys are doing pretty well as well. Artikutsu is doing okay. Kamerovo. Novosibirsk. Oh, well, good luck, guys. Aryan Brotherhood's right there. Cool. And, of course, for popularity. Franco is pretty well received and i really don't want to do this i really don't do this but we got to do this businessmen lean toward franco and the business businessmen will probably be mostly aligned towards franco i'm so sorry gdp growth <laughs> uh someone recommend i play salazar uh because we have to get franco's popularity up as high as possible franco is the leader if i had salazar's popularity become as high as possible or even higher then Franco's, then he would he would automatically just become leader. There's like no, there's no special event where he becomes leader. They just literally flip flop depending on who has more popularity. So, I mean, if I chose that, if I wanted to really break up the union, I could have gotten Salazar as a leader, but it just didn't turn out that way. Um, so if that's just the way it, the game works for Iberia, um, and yeah, there's another comment from yesterday saying that hey, you know what, Algeria worked out for everyone. We had a war, we got all of Algeria that we wanted under us. We expanded our own personal holdings. So I mean, what's not to love? Oh boy, we're getting attacked, but it seems like we're winning, which is good. Could you potentially attack here and be successful? If, could you guys attack here and be successful? Maybe not, probably not. I'm going to say no. Yeah, I should not have sent these tanks over. Ooh, that was a bad idea. Alright, so someone said that if Goring would have won, which Borman just won, but if Goring had won, we might have to fight Goring's Germany because Goring just, he likes going to war with everyone, so. And it looks like Borman's won. The Civil War, which is okay. He's going to be maybe a little bit more aggressive, but we'll see what happens. I'm actually glad that we don't have to deal with the uh, goal ring, but you know what? What happens, happens. Oh, yes, add more money. Raise worker salaries. Well, they're still content. Borman wins the German Civil War. How old is Borman at this point? He's got to be really old. Oh, God, we're actually going to lose here. That's not good. Oh, that sucks. 
Bowman wins the German Civil War. After years of fighting and bloody deadlock, the end of the German Civil War has finally come. The victor is Bowman, a staunch conservative and the man most experienced or expected by several international observers to be the final victor. As a new Nazi leader begins to pick up the pieces and returns to unnormal or unsteady normalcy in the nation, there's ample time to implement several defense plans that we were that were intended to go into effect earlier this year. As Bowman has shown no desire to change German foreign policy, the Kaduyos and Iberian Council are convinced that the previous plans are still effective and that there's ample time to implement them. Oh boy. I have no idea what's going to happen. Please don't kill me off. For the love of God, please do not. I don't like losing there. Mm. Can I actually help here, maybe? Yeah, no, you guys are just probably too weak. Gun-wise, we got plenty of guns, because we, we need guns. We're going to need a lot of guns. Regional representation. We'll, we'll do that last, maybe. Ensure system mutuability. Let's discourage leftist involvement first. So, now that we have a way for some people to obtain relative power over the nation, we need to make sure that none of them lean the wrong way. We best make sure that no one near the council should be involved in any leftist groups, even in the slightest of ways. I'm just looking around to see if there's any other trees we can do. Nope, nothing else has happened. That's good. Making provisions for the leg legislative oversight. Another part of the fundamental law, or the organic state, enables the council to, in theory, request information from organizations such as the military and the governments of Spain and Portugal. While this can make the job easier, it would also empower the council even more, something that both Caduios are reasonably worried about. Uh, if you're attacking, you might as well help, help, help them out. While limiting their power to request information is a legitimate option, restricting the council in this manner could severely hamper their ability to effectively perform their duties, potentially causing any more than lethal intra-governmental conflicts to threaten our union every day. Not allowing them to decrease reformism, give, give them everything they could need. Go ahead, that's fine. Civilian budget boost? Nonsense. More budget. Keep building, guys. You're doing a great job. Now, they're going to be separating. I'm going to attack down here. Okay, so they're separating for realsies. I want to destroy them as much as possible. Oh, boy. Bormann is a staunch conservative, and that means his methods shall be predictable and based on Germany's previous exploits. One of the most notable of these was the aerial bombing operations, which legendarily crippled the industrial capacity of any nation that drew their ire. The fearful capabilities of the Luftwaffe can be seen in the desolation of Western Africa following the Second World War, and the bombing operations that turned Russia from a respectable power into an anarchic wasteland. Thus, in order to avoid meeting the fate ourselves, a means of protecting our civilians is necessary. This means we shall come... It sh in, uh, this means shall come in the form of the humble air raid siren. While not capable of directly protecting our industry, this would give ample time to our citizens to get to the shelters and for various cities garrisons to get anti-aircraft systems online. Unless we can revolutionize our air force and meet the modern air standards demanded by our potential opponents, the stopgap measure will have to do. Seems like we have to do what we have to do. Okay, good. Yeah, focus on uh, Denmark, guys. Yeah, go ahead and focus on Denmark. Oh, we are not winning here. That is not good. But wearing us down is not good. But wearing them down is also a good thing to do. Because they're, they're getting really worn out, which is good. Very, very, very good. Come on, get in there. Good. We lost here, but that's... Oh, we can't... Can we actually get to there? No, we can't. So we're going to help out here, too. If we can push down here, that'd be great. Ooh, Western Cape's looking pretty good, too. Hmm. Maybe. We'll see what happens. You might as well help out. I really just want to destroy the forces. Now, it's hurting us quite a bit to do this. But the Union of South Africa is looking pretty darn good right now. I'm here to... Oh, they abandoned Western Cape. He's killing our soldiers off. So unfortunately. Yeah, they got tired out. Tuckered out. They did lose eventually. Go straight for Cape Town if you can. Oh, the Yadka and the Brotherhood? Cool. Go straight for Cape Town. Yep, Denmark is gone. Or we're defeated. Nice. It's going to do, limit the regional veto. The veto is the worst thing in our governments by far. It only leads to a bunch of complicated threads, threats, or threads, spreading across our nation for no reason, and should result in plenty of good ideas being vetoed, and results in many of the ideas being vetoed. Should we limit just what the veto can actually do, or should we leave it and spare the political maze we would need to navigate through, through to keep everyone satisfied? Uh, no matter what we do, we're going to piss people off. So rooting out lots of influence because of the Iberian Council presenting a potential inroad to power for malicious elements. Regardless of how small it is, the Council must be carefully watched for the mal malignant leftist influence. Officials must be carefully vetoed to ensure no connection to the PCE, CNT, IR, or any other problematic groups. Additionally, we will ensure that our peripheral personnel, such as staffers, do not have historical ties to left-wing groups, though through these programs, we can reasonably and securely ensure the integrity of the Union and make it immune to leftist subversion. We shall remain vigilant always. Yeah, if we could get down there, that'd be great. Oh, they were already defeated. So, we're reviewing the border fortifications. Good. For far too long, our border fortifications with the French state have been neglected. However, with the clear violation of Vichy France by Brittany and Burgundy, we can no longer trust the Germans to take a sane route in dealing with the French. 
We must renew the old Pyrenees line immediately. In order to do so, we will initiate several inspections across the line, place or replace, built-in artillery, ensure that the log logistical problems involved with running heavy, heavy artillery and armor in the mountains are maximized for potential threat, yet minimized for purposes. If the Germans come, we will be ready for them. Yeah, how much are our expenses rising? Oh, that's not too bad. That's really not too bad. We can afford that. That's fine with me. Yeah, go ahead and kill these guys off. My main goal is to at least take uh, this part of South Africa done, because my god. Oh my gosh, and just look at look how weak our guys are. They're so incredibly weak. Ah, better weapons, though. That's good. Uh, it is 64. It's about to be 65. Let's grab some better weapons. Improvement level 6. Love it. Yeah, we can't really do much here. That sucks. Yeah, I really should not have sent these tanks. Good lord. Woo! Uh, we're going to need more APCs. Guns are looking great, but apparently we're going to need them for later on, like I said previously in other episodes. Uh, motorized? Do we really need motorized? Hmm. Main battle tanks? Yeah, we're going to need a lot of these. Infantry? How? Ooh. Eh. Oh, you're only 12 combat width? Oh, wait. Oh, oh, my goodness. What have I been doing? Artillery. Oh, we need more army XP. It's fine. Throw in some artillery then. Uh, actually, for these divisions, do they, need mo do they need motorized artillery? I don't see motorized. I doubt you guys would need it. You guys, infantry, APCs, IFEs, no. Why am I making motorized then? I've been, this entire time I've been making motorized for no reason. We could use that extra factory on something else, so. Uh, where's that infantry division? I want to wait till we get that other infantry division. Hey, we've got Cape Town back for them. That's great. Hold them in place. Take them out as well. Restores order over Central Europe. Siberia. Siberia. Oh, God. The divine mandate of Siberia. Oh, what a nation. What a nation. All right. Hopefully, they don't navally invade them again. And add more money to the budget. $10 million? We're 80% of the way done, though. Securing Equatorial Africa. Our small equatorial and African colony has been in jeopardy for some time now due to the heavy German presence in the area. While Müller is slightly more reasonable than the ex commissars that sees the Portuguese colonies in southern Africa, he still presents the same mortal threat uh, that any agent of the Reich does simply by existing on our borders. Additionally, with the formation of the Africa Shield and South African War, it is extremely evident that the Reich's commissars will not hesitate to expand wantonly into any territory that takes their fancy. Therefore, at our at-risk colony could be turned or fortified as quickly and as thoroughly as possible. While its risky position and the appalling state of our economy will present challenges in the sector, there's nothing that a few honeyed words and promises of freedom and volunteer labor cannot solve. When it comes to the field of construction, hopefully, when the endeavor is over, the Rex Commissars will choose a different target and kindly leave us alone. They're still content, so... That's a lot of money. Ten million dollars. Oh, and businessmen only lean towards us. That's fine. I mean, we're so conservative. 33. That's fine with me. That is okay. Okay, so we got another one of these. Let's see. Trade. Aluminum's not great. Al rubber's not terrible. We're doing better on uh, fuel, though. I could use a, maybe at least one or two more. A few more military factories. A few more. Oh, I guess six more, then. It's going to make our military spending increase. We're still building some civilian factories, which is good. And eventually, I still want to get more refineries, too. So, that'll be good. Go on. Crush these guys. There you go. Now that's nice. Don't waste equipment by moving. Uh, are you moving in? You might as well continue moving. There you go. Great. We actually have a meltdown here. Great. Now we gotta kill off these guys. So, actually, let's see. Ongoing conflicts. South African... Zentra African War. So, really, the Union of South Africa is fighting all these people. That's a lot of dead guys. I think the main goal would be for us now to destroy everything up here. So, hopefully... Infrastructure is just a little bit better. There's less terrain problems. So we'll see what happens. Actually, you know what? We're going to concentrate everyone right here. Uh, yeah. There you go. Plane-wise? Not too bad. Not too bad. Could be better. Could be better. Slowly running out of planes. Silence the saber. Now that our more urgent preparations are complete, it is time to finally put an end to Bormann's saber ra rattling by rattling our own saber back. We shall hold an enormous military exercise in the far western Pyrenees, simulating a potential German invasion from the French border. While the plans for the exercise existed before, it has been heavily altered to reflect the loss of the triumvirate as dependable allies in wartime. Still, even without Italian naval support, armor divisions, and supplemental air power, the display is sure to be enough to make sure Bormann turns his head towards a weaker neighbor. The, festivi the festivities shall occur over a week-long period and be attending, attended personally by both cabillos. Elements from every wing of the Iberian armed forces shall be present, from the Federal Army to the Portuguese Army to the Spanish Army to the Guardia Civil units being used as reserves. 
two, two full tank divisions, the majority of the Iberia's armor corps, shall be deployed in advancing maneuvers in the foothills of the Pyrenees, while split elements of the Spanish and Portuguese army shall serve as the federal army's opposing force in the mountains themselves. To prevent foreign interference, a massive deployment of military policemen and elements of the AAS shall stand in support. As a bonus, since the exercise is occurring within the Basque populated region of Iberia, it could serve to shock the problematic ETA into lying low for a while. Hush now, everything is alright. For now. Actually, can I send any more planes? Um, jet fighters. Actually, let's go to 50. Which, yeah, we still have some enemy jet fighters here we have to contend with. That's okay, though. Let's see. Limit the original veto? Maybe, maybe not. Ensure system mutuability. Regardless of how much we limit their power, it would serve us well to allow a way to ensure this council doesn't get out of hand ever. After all, they should have moved towards something that would put Iberia in danger. Uh, should they do that, the Cabrillos must have a legal way to shut the whole thing down until order can, of course, be restored. Limit the regional veto. Cool. One of the most destructive systems within Iberia is the allowance of Spain or Portugal vetoing the other nation's domestic affairs. They could potentially limit the Iberian Council's ability to do this with significant political expenditure. However, it is almost certain to anger Salazar and may increase his perception of Spanish dominance within the Union. If this is performed, a campaign to reassure Portugal that the federal government represents all of Iberia and not just Spain will be required. Unlimited vetoing shall will shrink reformism. We don't need it. Force it through. The veto situation is ridiculous. Yeah, I'm sorry. But it's a necessary evil. Uh, it's almost 65. Almost. We can almost do stuff. Actually, ooh, more synthetic oil. We can get level 2. Ooh, we get more. Ooh. Ooh. I like that one. Ooh. Uh, we could probably use this one more than the oil processing because we're already getting more and more fuel right now, which is great. 1.15. Reformism is at 34 out of 100. Looking beyond the peninsula, we already did all that stuff. Add three, yes, add more money to the budget. Upgrade the cranes, I'd love to do that, but I really want to get to install the hydroelectric generators first. That'd be good, 80% done. Come on, I really want to get this one done. We only have seven million, we need another three million dollars to put in the budget. Yeah, with uh, Germany doing a little better, we're gonna actually throw one right there. Uh, we could use more APCs as well, more artillery, of course. I'm really focusing on tanks right now, though. Really focusing on tanks. You can do that when you get there. We got one extra one. Do one extra one here. That'd be good. Do that as well. Planes, not bad. We're not making any tactical bombers, which we sent down here, but, you know, whatever. Alright, so our guys should have enough time to do... Oh, what are you taking so long for? Three divisions. That's quite a few divisions, man. How strong are these? Eh, only infantry with recon, huh? Oh. Anything here? Not really. The dam payment will have to be made soon, which is fine. Uh, ooh, we made just another civilian factory. Hopefully we did. That'd be great. And we can't do this, because empowered minorities, disempowered minorities. Uh, I guess we'll determine re regional representation. The council was formed with only Spain and Portugal in mind, as the Caldeo is intended. However, there have been cries from other regions of Iberia demanding representation in politics. We can ignore their pleas or grant them seats in the council. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. The emergency provision. So, in order to ensure that the Iberian Council remains a useful tool and a reasonable system, the Cadillos shall create a legal mechanism for the dissolution and refounding of the Council. With the potentially compromised Council able to be shut down at any time, Iberia should be able to function better than ever before. Of course, to ensure that this system is not abused, it shall require unanimous consent among the Cadillos, and the Council shall be able to re be reestablished at any time, which is a good thing to have. Man, that's very thin. That is scarily thin. I don't know. I'm not sure this is modeled correctly, but holy cow. If this guy just, like, if we just took over the land right there. Broke this up into two. That could spell the end for these guys over here. That would not be very good. More money to the dam, please. And please, even more money. More money. More money. More money, please. I kind of like... I kind of don't like it, but I kind of like it that we are... Ooh. Dam express train. Lane. Line. Train line. That we can't just throw endless money at this project. Which is probably a good idea. But at the same time, 82.5% completed. I want to just get it done as fast as possible, so. Can we actually win here? Yeah, we can. Colonial Garasans, probably. Alfonso, you're doing a great job. Does our field marshal have any upgrades himself? What's going on? Oh, he might. He's a offensive guy, a fortress buster, which is okay. Equipment capture ratio gain. It's probably not worth it. Let's... Actually, no, let's not do that. He's, he's not—he's a field marshal. He's not a general, so we'd only get like half of that, which is 1.5%, which is basically nothing. 
Um, I'm gonna go with... Let's go recover a little bit faster. Why not? Nice. Maybe... Uh, even if we went over here, it doesn't really matter too much. Seeing as, uh... Hold on. This is all the enemy line, so we'd have to come over here and then over there to cut the capital off from everyone else, so... That wouldn't be very good. Oh! Anything over here? No, not yet. Oh! Oh, raise worker salaries. Worker's anger? What do you mean? No, no, no. Hire more technicians? Reduce the... Ooh, maintenance cost? I need that 3 million one, or the, or the 1 million and the 2 million one. Ugh. Ah. Give me the 2 million one or the 3 million one, come on. Gibraltar Dam payment, whatever. Okay, yay, 11 million! Yes, 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 yes. And we can do that one too. Reduce the maintenance cost. 77 million should go down. Yes, please. Oh, oh, crap, they're upset. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. Uh, I guess the next thing when we invest more money in here will be to reduce the workers' anger. Whoopsie. My minority representation? The Basque, the Catalonians, and the Galicians move further away from our union every single day. While some of us, or some of these, are more expected than others, this will only hurt us more in the end unless we do something. Yeah, so we should probably do something about that. <gasps> oh, yeah, the issue of regional representation. At the formation of, of the Iberian Council, it was decided that there should be representatives from the main constitu constituent parts of Iberia, namely Spain and Portugal. However, there are concerns that allowing representatives for only those two regions would disenfranchise the smaller provinces. There are two options. The Castillos could ignore the cries for representation and allow only Spanish and Portuguese representatives. The other is to to this problem would be to accept a few token representatives from the smaller region, such as Catalonia or Galicia. This should, hopefully, end help in calming down separatist sentiment. Worse instability. Oh, I kind of like that. Split them up, allow smaller provinces a token preference. Yeah. I, uh, unfortunately, we have to do that, so be it. Whatever. At the end of the South African War. Peace at last. 34 out of 100. Not bad. Not great, but not bad. We're pretty much aligned how we kind of want to be looking beyond the peninsula. Actually, our GDP growth is what? Stalemate in South Africa. Oh, wait. Ah, look at that. That's nice. And our growth actually went down by 0.2 instead of 0.3, which is... It went up earlier in the last episode or two episodes ago by... up went by, It went up by 0.3, and now it's gone down by 0.2. So, overall, it's okay. And the debt is, in, is the deficit's looking slightly better right now. So, as the hills of South Africa grow scarred with the damages of war, and the great pastures being choked with the corpses of young men, no victory can be de determined. When once one might say the Boers had the upper hand, and at other times people may have talked of an impending American victory, no such shock takes place any longer. The war is not lo lost, yet neither has been won. As thousands of Iberian, primarily Portuguese, men now lay dead in South Africa, thousands more back home mourn for their losses in conflict over far overseas, in a land no more relevant to them than the shores of Alaska. In the grievance of their insurmountable losses, many have begun to question the war and the motives behind Iberian involvement. Uh oh the People look to Salazar for answers, yet he has none to provide for them. When once Salazar would have spoken at length of the restoration of Iberian glory and an Iberian resurgence among the world stage, now he says nothing. Salazar knows the war is by no means a success, and the fervor he once held for the Iberian intervention has all but, but been but extinguished as all hopes of victory. As all hope of victory. Oh, crap. Oh, man, is that, that probably doesn't sound good for us, then. We stalemated. I mean, we basically won the war for South Africa. Uh, ooh, uh, more budget. Um, hmm. Well then. Uh, bureaucrats are fully, fully Franco line, lean, lean, fully, mostly Franco line, leans. Uh, well, at least our soldiers are back. We don't have to waste any more tanks. Oh. Okay then. Oh, Bennett is now president. Oh, well, okay. Cool. Good for you, man. Good for you. I'm going to go ahead and train you guys up. That'd be great. 29 billion, or less than 10 billion in terms of debt. Communists reunify Kazakhstan. Meet the old boss. Uh, cool. Better weapons. Happy 1965, my friends. Hopefully it'll be a new, a great year for us. They're led by Mame Shuli. Bandit Plague, Red Army. Oh, I wish Kazakhstan had a focus tree, but whatever. Right, let's come over here. Industry. Research efficiency gain. Civilian factory construction speed. Yeah, I like that a lot. What else exists? Does Wales have a focus tree? Oh, they might, actually. Man, maybe I'll play as Wales someday. That might be really, really hard. <laughs> That's cool that they have their own focus tree, though. That's really cool. A little bit of lag, just kind of auto saving. Come on, let me invest in the dam. 87.5% done. They're still upset, you know, so be it, whatever. Let me invest. Ah, minority representation. Maybe, maybe not. And we gotta wait for this thing to fire. 
Placating the Separatists One of the many issues plaguing the Iberian Union are Separatists and minority regions. Basque terrorists are sabotaging rail or road construction, and Catalans are complaining about being neglected by the government. Even in Galicia, there are some who consider abandoning what they see as a failing union. If nothing is done to quell the Separatist sentiment, the union will face even more problems. One option is that being considered is increased encouraging is increasing the encouraging of the acceptance of a Spanish identity in the problematic regions. Another option is to allow for limited self-government, overseen by people handpicked by Cadillo Franco. Considerably worse than that Iberia's stability. There's only Spain? The illusion of power may keep them placated. Uh, I guess. Public legislature. We finally did it. We created something to fix our organized government. No longer will we get stuck in a legislative or veto hell, but instead we'll actually have a system that will hopefully store everything efficiently. To a long and prosperous future, three cheers for Iberia. Yes, great. And actually, we're looking pretty good on Aerox speed. That's really nice. That's a little different than what I'm used to. Or Iberia. Let's see. Planes, come over here. Planes did a great job. Let's see. Uh, what are these? Early fighters, jet fighters, tactical bombers, tactical bombers. Well, you guys did pretty well. Uh, I'm gonna go. Hmm. Here to you. I'm gonna do this as well. Nice. I'm going to keep 50 here just in case we need it for later. Come on. I don't want them upset. The current budget allocated for the damage is zero. Yeah, I know. I want more money. We need more money. Oh, a little bit of lag right there. What's going on? Well, Germany looks pretty thick. Not going to lie. They took out Bo Bohemian? Bohemian? Bohemian. Bohemia. The shield's broken. Cool. Um, their brother's look looking bad. Hmm. Getting more fuel. Actually, we might be able to cut down on fuel finally. Uh, trade. Sorry, America, we love your fuel. But we don't need it as much right now. Puppet legislature? Great! Now we're done with that. So, the, it hasn't been resolved. After a lengthy period of meetings, the new fundamental law alterations and compromises not seen, not seen since the original foundation of the Iberian Union, the Iberian Council has finally been established as a limited legislative body for all of Iberia. Under the strict supervision of the Cadillos, the Council's hoped to be part of the solution to Iberia's many administrative woes. The first session of the Iberian Council shall occur immediately, or imminently, with intent to address both the situation in Germany and the problems with the Iberian economic structure. Great! The Iberian Council, which gained, gained more daily political power, stability, and improve our stability, and England joins Einheit's Pact. Oh, boy. That is not good, but Borman probably put a lot of pressure on them to do so. Despotism. Crippled, so crippled sovereignty. Economic nightmare. Betrayal of the old guard. Dis Ooh. I mean, that's nice. Resources to markets. Actually, that's not nice. That's not good for us. Extremely stable. Nice. That's a little unusual to see. Add a million to the budget, please. Improve worker security. That is fine with me. I don't know if any of these, like, really do that much more. They both say they decrease worker anger, but... I'm gonna go do that one. So we can get that done as fast as possible. It, it happens within a month, and everything else happens within, like, a few more months, except for hire more technicians. So it is what it is. 87.5%, not bad. Keep building yourselves up. Come on, come on. Oh, we actually have three plus lines. Nice. Keep making more civilian factories, though. Nice. Very good. Uh, cut the military spending for now, too. That helped out just slightly, slightly more. Now, it does hurt our output, which really sucks, but, you know. That is but a number that could hurt us later on. Dreschler wins in Oslin. Very cool. Uh, what's going on over here? Oh, there we go. The situation in Goa. Ah, this is one I was told to be aware of. Go ahead and upgrade the... Ooh. I want to reduce maintenance cost. Upgrade the quarters... I will raise the salaries. I, I would like it if I had my salary raised as well. So let's do that. Anything else over here? Nope. So, with the establishment of the Iberian Council, order is being restored to the peninsula, freeing up the government to work on other press mat pressing matters. It is past due that Iberia set its sight on the rest of the world, and the first step of this process will be the coastal city of Goa. Formerly a Portuguese colony, the port of Goa was seized by India shortly after the conclusion of the Second World War, near the turn of the decade. In tandem with the annexation of Angola and Mozambique by Germany, the garrison had already been substantially reduced, moved to the Portuguese colonies in Africa to defend them from the German attacks. Reportedly, not a single shot was fired in defense or an assault of this port city, with the garrison simply surrendering, surrendering, surrendering and withdrawing from the port, allowing the Indian forces to move in and capture the Carlos entirely unopposed. The nature of Goa's incident, however, raises quite a few doubts within the general staff, some who believe that there was more to the incident than the well-being of the troops. There are two reasonable conclusions, according to our general staff. The attack was in whole. 
Indian aggression, taking land which did not belong to them, and against such numbers, how could they already minimize garrison hope to resist them? After all, the garrison was outnumbered and under-equipped. Defeat at the hands of the superior Indian forces was inevitable. The second conclusion, though, carries far more ominous implications. That some unknown factor motivated the garrison commander to order our forces to stand down, surrounding our territories in Goa without so much as a protest. A stronger Salazar may improve the outcome. Um... Hmm... Ooh, I don't know which one's better to take. I know that Goa, is, this is very important, but I don't want to blame India, I think. I want to have better relations with India. Demands competition. I really want to have good relations with India, so... Because we try to recognize them instead of the Azand Hin government, so the gar we'll just blame the garrison commander. Not that I necessarily like it, but it is what it is. And, oh, you guys already trained. Nice, that's good. Very good. Point four a day, not much, but you know what, it'll work. So, interrogating the garrison commander. Having a small series of questions with the Goa garrison commander, Vaso e Silva, we're now able to confirm absolutely nothing. <laughs> Our interrogation has proved entirely fruitless, having gotten little more than in his insistence that he is not at fault, that the Indian aggression was the root cause, and he surrendered for the good of his men, despite repeatedly being questioned. While it may be simply non-cooperative and attempting to hide something, it is still entirely possible that he really is innocent, and India's aggression was fully to blame. Now the question is, who's more fully at fault? If it wasn't the commander, then it was India. I don't think he's going to talk. Let's just go and investigate the Goa documents. I really don't want to piss him off. Oh, nice. Rubber processing. Processing. Very, very good. Max factories in the state. That'd be pretty good. More output. I love more output. More. F oh, even more output there, though. Production cap. Growth. Military factories. We're, we are building some military factories. Well, let's go ahead and do this one. Military construction. Because we're going to get it done eventually, anyways. Very good. This has turned very interesting. And we have no land auction, so we're getting a lot of political power. So, investigating the documents. Given the non-cooperative nature of uh, A. Silva, we've been forced to follow a more complicated trail of information, and our agents have been forced to coast through an endless series of paperwork and reports, but at least they've discovered exactly what they were hunting for. Reports, audits, and scores of other documents detailing just what exactly went on in that port. While the political reports appear, for the most part, normal, the financial audits are what we quickly came to have an interest in. For, while for a time the trend seemed reasonable, there seems to have appeared to have been a gradual slippage of integrity culminating in a, an exceptionally large unexplained payment in mid-November of 1961. I think there's something here. Hmm. This does raise quite a few questions. Manpower is looking a little lower, that's okay. Uh, actually, oh, the Vanishing Arms. A recent, an interesting phenomenon has been reported in the province of Barcelona. Apparently, several Italian arms shipments have gone missing in the state-owned warehouses near the wharf due to the fact that these arms are earmarked for the Federal Army, which is rather shoddily equipment in the sector. Getting to the bottom of the supply leak is of the utmost importance. Several leads have been noticed, and it can be pursued, including access records to the secure area of the warehouses, the guard ships, and if worse comes to worse, some worrying accounts of separatist activity in the area. And this is Catalonia. It is very possible that nearly any force could be involved. Additionally, due to the lack of damage on the buildings or storage areas, it is very possible that the forces causing the arms disappearances has one or more men on the inside. While this is hopefully not the case, it could be best to keep the investigation quiet in order to make sure that nothing leaks. Investigate immediately. And the officials, officials bribed by the Indian military. Shocking news! Confirming our concerns, it would appear that unspecified payment was more than just a simple corruption scheme. According to our investigations, the payment can be traced back to several officers in, or officials in the Indian Army. And from there, it isn't unreasonable to assume that the stand-down order was motivated, motivated by more than well-being of the troops. Now we know for certain the guilt of E. Silva. Still, it is entirely possible that this conspiracy reaches far deeper than we could expect, and more officials from Goa were involved in this plot than simply the garrison commander. Was there a next course of action? Must reach the end of this. And the investigation potentials involved the Indian Army, you say. We must reach the end of this. I want to... I'm going to go all the way in. I'm going to go all the way in, man. I don't know what's going to happen. This might not be good for stability and stuff, but we're going in. Arm shipments missing. So, despite the best efforts of the AAS, it seems that the leads presented were all dead ends. Thorough questioning of the warehouse guards returns nothing but reports of strange noises in the night, which are fairly typical for postings in a large city. Background checks also failed to re reveal anything of note. The Guardian civil officers charged with guarding this area are apparently all entirely loyal, with no history of corruption at all. The access roads are also useless, as there's simply no way for anyone to remove crates of guns and anti-tank mu munitions without being detected by for outside forces. Whatever is going on here is clearly a legal matter for the local police, or a simple bureaucratic error. Thus, it is best to either kick the issue down to the locals or drop it, and instead focus on preventing anonymous situations like this from happening again, be it through greater security or bureaucratic reforms. Um, I want to blame the bureaucrats, maybe. Hmm. Send this down. Send this down the chain to the police. 
Give it a, yeah, just give it to the police. Screw it. Government officials involved in Goa bribing appears that a little conspiracy goes deeper still. Having expanded the scope of their search, our agents have discovered a very intriguing set of documents. This paperwork reveals that several high officials in the Iberian government also took Indian money using Isalva as a sort of go-to-between. What will the investigation com committee do with the, this damning evidence? Archive the case now, refocusing the investigation. With the failure of the AAS to find anything at all in the investigation of the missing arms shipments, control of the effort has been handed down to the local police department. While they're not necessarily expected to find anything, given the devilishly tricky means, given the devilishly tricky means that they were undoubtedly used to seize the arms shipments, it's possible that the locals could pick up on some sort of subtle tip that the federals were not able to detect. The AAS has mostly pulled out of the city, leaving behind only token force at its regional headquarters, a revamping former Union Hall. They are prepared to support the locals if a lead is picked up, but they are otherwise standing down for the time being. Hopefully they can find something we missed. Oh, this does not seem good. Just does not seem good. Um, yeah, we're still trying to improve the salaries. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Local police pick up a lead. Hey, the Barcelona police have been hard at work these past few days, investigating numerous trails across the city, occasionally resulting in the showdowns between the officers and CNT rebels. While these conflicts weren't ideal thanks to them, several confirmed CNT members have been caught and the information forced out of them. Thankfully, this information appears to be true as it has already led to multiple arrests due to the similarities of these events. The police force has been able to narrow down their search regions uh, into something more manageable than before, and it is all but assured that within a few days, uh, they will have enough information to conduct a full raid on wherever they believe the arms are being stored after them. Case archived. With, deep within the vast catacombs that make up the Iberian archives, a box full of files was deposited. While well, normally the, the labyrinth nature of the archives is a scourge of any who work with it today, it was a boon. These documents had two layers of security against uh, against any prying eyes. First, they were within one of the most secure locations on the peninsula. Second, they're buried deep within, unlikely ever to be see, to see sunlight again. These items will trouble Iberia no longer. Make sure it's safe. Yes. State secrets. I love it. Uh, give me another military factory, please. The police attempt to seize the arms shipments. Oh, boy. Oh, we got plenty of guns for what's about to happen, man. After pinpointing the location of the stolen arms in an abandoned warehouse, the Barcelona police mobilized a large number of officers for an all-out raid. With the guns loaded, fu vehicles fueled, and their sights set, the police moved out at a predetermined time late at night. Soon after departing, though, the plan immediately began to fall apart. All across the city, people were about breaking curfew and causing chaos in the streets. The officers were held up at the blockades, with many of them being forced to reverse and find another path to the warehouse. Some were not as lucky, with many citizens acting in open revolt, attacking the officers, injuring five and killing one. As the night continued, the exact amount of civilian casualties has not been accounted for yet. A few officers successfully arrived at the warehouse at the predetermined time, and upon arriving, they immediately realized what had happened. Before they could get away, however, CNT rebels opened fire on their cars, and the result, and the rest of the night is history. Those officers were never seen again. No tolerance for criminal scum. Oh my goodness. Now, okay, so that that's just open. That's just a justification to open fire on any rebel. So, okay, yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll definitely see what happens. CNT contro seizes control of Barcelona after outmaneuvering the Barcelona police. Oh, uh, can we please? I thought I had to pause. Cool. Uh, and securing a major victory, the CNT FAI moved on with the next phase of their plan. With nobody to oppose them, fully, they seized the seized fully control of the city. They seized it, also adding what few officers still remain in the city. As an added negative, they also seized the officers' equipment, adding to their arsenal. Out of the equipment, morale, and time, the three officers realized that this is not something that they can control anymore, and need military assistance if Barcelona is going to be recaptured. We have a few options on how to deal with this, such as performing an old-fashioned siege with artillery, or bombarding the city from the sea. The other solution, one which is likely to succeed but ultimately be detrimental to the city, is to mobilize our tanks and take the city by force without letting them prepare for a siege. The choice is ours, but we need to decide quickly. Uh... Ooh, I like I like sieging down places with artillery, but that sounds like fun. Um, this all does not sound very good. We can send in the tanks, siege the city. You know what? We're gonna siege the city because this is all the same options. I don't like this. We gotta deal with these terrorist scum as fast as possible. The Battle of Barcelona, great. For the moment, the radical leftist trade union known as the CNT FAI and its sympathizers have been wrest control of Barcelona and are now set for a bloody prolonged struggle against the counterattack of pro government forces. Its tale is as old as time as itself for Spain, as the nation plays out the bloody, tumultuous years of the 30s once more. We shall win. Yeah, uh, just in case, I'm going to move these guys back maybe a little bit. I don't know how far things are going to get, so form a line like that. Barcelona falls in indiscriminate bombardment. As their heavy guns fall silent, so does the city. The rebel have downed their guns and surrounded in ways. Our siege worked, but at a cost. A good portion of the city is in ruins, three days of constant, sh constant shelling by our large 15 centimeter howitzers being the cause. As the AAS struggles with arresting the thousands of traders, residents and soldiers go into the city, army men carrying a gun in hand, always looking at the floor for mines and booby traps. Many residents are seen crying on top of the rubble, dead family members who couldn't evacuate be because of age or condition just or just loss of their homes. An aura of misery and a smell of death lingers in the area and the most heavily damaged neighborhoods. More civilians than CNT partisans have died. However, it is still a victory, not a pyrrhic one, but total. 
All CNT forces have surrendered in the city, afraid of, of our might, of our artillery pieces. The Iberian flag waves once more on the Casa de la Ciutat. Victory at Casa... Oh, that's not, that's not good, but you know what? With these rebels, you know what you do with rebels like that? Hmm. You do things that you can't say on YouTube. Uh, Barcelona secure. Gunfire still sounds occasionally in the hottest zones of Barcelona, but otherwise, the Iberian army and Guardia civil seems to have control of the situation. Uh, Anarchist CNT has finally been put down at last, it seems. <coughs> Excuse me. However, this is only raised more questions. How are they able to hold this revolt? And how did they secure so much popular support? It seems that there's many things that we must do as a nation to prevent this crisis from happening again. As the bodies are buried and the last leftist militants executed, the Cadillos and Iberian Council must determine a new course of action. But what has to come? Yes. Okay, so it's mo we're moderately stable. Okay, we were extremely stable. Now we're moderately stable. Barcelona. Barcelona's Barcelona. You know, it's, it's probably a really, really nice place. But if they want rebels, well, they can have the rebellion. That's fine. We'll just see what happens. The aftermath. The report couldn't be any clearer. Hundreds dead, thousands injured in a city devastated, while Barcelona may have been retaken by government forces. This has been a wake-up call. It seems clear now that the administration just hasn't done enough to fight terrorism, and those that to seek to destroy Iberia are getting stronger every day. Separatists and extremist terrorist groups such as the CNT, EATA, and the FSLP, and the BTA have been allowed to fester and grow like tumors, accumulating resources, support, and weapons while we turn a blind eye. Sounds like we need a war on terror. But we're not going to the Middle East. Since the battle ended, countless reports have reached the capital from all provinces about suspicious activities. If we don't do something, what will be next? The ETA seals seizing Bilbao? Terrorists targeting cabinet members? Madrid falling to socialists? It's clear that the government must double down on its efforts to crush the terrorist menace, and will do so by any means possible. The nation will burn before the terrorists win. Move as fast as we can. Aw, yeah. Here we go, boys and girls, if you're watching. Barcelona burns. The Battle of Barcelona will go down as a defining and traumatizing moment in, in Iberian history. Everyone remembers what they were doing when they heard Barcelona, Barcelona was burning. The government's decision to allow TV crews to follow the advancing troops and broadcast live from the front in hopes of a propaganda victory horribly backfired. Caring Iberian mothers had to cover their children's eyes when the television showed a Leonardo Vulture packing the eye of a dead CNT member underneath the marble facade of the Sagrada Familia Cathedral and the footage of a Guardia Civil Colonel Executing a handcuffed militiaman becoming became the centerpiece of the heated arguments at Sunday family launches throughout the whole Union. Our citizens are starting to question if the state is fully, really capable of protecting them. Franco has made a reassuring speech explaining that the Barcelona uprising was a complete failure, and the Reds lost both the military and the political battle, but behind closed doors, everyone in the regime knows that this Barcelona was only the beginning of the violence. Our fragile Union will not be able to withstand another Barcelona, and everything in our power must be done to stop the terrorists. What a bunch of scum. Alright. Uh, blank check operations? Mobilize AAS. Terrorism can now be tracked and combated via the political screen. New decisions, Iberia's stability will depend on this. Oh, I like this. Definitive plan for the reform and expansion of the AAS. Create exceptional or exception ordinances permitting the AAS to release prisoners for use as informants. Preemptively detain suspects without charges. Perform enhanced interrogation techniques. Commander law, uh, com commandeer local law enforcement and produce and use compromising materials against terrorism supporters. Also grant their officers immunity from prosecution under Iberian law while performing their duty allowing undercover work in terrorist organizations. Funding will be drastically increased and selection processes for new officers shall begin immediately. The currently widespreadness of the agency is insufficient in dealing with the expected terrorist threat. Recruit and train teams of loyal officers from minority backgrounds and embed them in, as local citizens in terrorist-supporting neighborhoods. Use them for full surveillance of the physical and uh, telematic spectrums. Create the GEO of Specialized counter-terrorist unit capable of swiftly dealing with high-risk arrests, bomb threats, and hostage situations without the need or help from the Army or the Guardian, guaranteeing operational security. That's a lot of reading. Woo. Oh, they're content. Yeah, see, they're content now. Yay, they're content. Good. And Russia's still on fire, which is fine. Uh, so, 33. Not bad, not bad. I, it seems like we should have a little bit more to do here, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. Mm. Go and train just a little bit more. I want to get up to... There we go. We're at 5. We don't really like that one. We prefer this one, so we can throw more artillery on here. How much artillery do we have? We have way more guns. I'm going to go and throw some regular infantry on them first, then. 8,800 goes down to, I assume, 6,000, maybe? Yeah, 6,000. 6,040. 6,400, not bad. And a million more dollars? Don't mind if I do. And we're going to grab this one for more uh, air mission efficiency, ground support, and recon company reconnaissance. Great. Keep training for now. Currently we get how much every day? 0.07. Not a lot, but that's okay. Mobilize the AAS. 
blank check operations. A series of reforms are being made to the AAS to ensure what happened in Barcelona will never happen again. However, intelligence is the only first step in our fight against terror. We will turn the terrorists' arms against them, and just as they laid waste to our living, we shall lay waste to theirs. The most, our most loyal AAS officers will reform the GAL, Grupos Antiterroristas de Liberación. These groups, primarily composed of former police officers, patriotic mercenaries, and concerned criminals, will participate in blank check operations without formal connection to the Liberian state. These brave men will carry out missions that our official state security forces cannot. The preventative neutralization of terrorist cadres inside or beyond Iberian borders, the kidnapping, interrogation, and extortation of valuable members within the hierarchy of various terrorist groups, and the realization of false flag operations against civilian targets as a form of armed propaganda to undermine sympathy for the terrorist cause. Para grandes malas. Grandes remedios. Cool. Now, what can we do here? Because we got a lot of political power. All right. So following the bloodbath in Barcelona, support for separatism is growing across Iberia. Militant groups are simultaneously growing in size, becoming more active with the Accencia Antiseparatista, uncovering an increasing uh, amount of new terror cells across the Union. All resources necessary, materials, and economic must be diverted to support the AAS in their fight against those who would want to see Iberia burn. Terrorism is combated from the political screen next to Iberia's ministers. Oh. Expend funding, less political power. A small money bill will be taken from reserves. Uh, go ahead and do that. Redirect military resources. We lose five. Oh, that's a lot of guns. And manpower. Uh, do that anyways. All right, so it says near the ministers. Oh, hello. You know what, dads? If the dads are watching, that's awesome. Thank you very, very much for just making sure that we know where this is at. Strike CNT leadership. Oh, my goodness. It's not vulnerable enough. For this is this is interesting. Holy cow. They're marked by resources. And to determine the actions one may take in order to combat terrorist groups, organizations, and stuff. Uh, budget boost. Uh, we can still use more budget boost. Buy more electrical equipment. Uh, down here. Still content. Mm, it's only a million. We could reduce the cost of it. Why not? Alright. So. Huh. Uh, the boldness and activity of a given separatist movement is measured by their activity. De determines the likelihood of an attack in the future. Okay. The wealth and material possessed by a given separatist group is measured by their supplies. Cool. So it looks like so far their activity is pretty all low, which is nice. Supply wise, they look okay. Let's determine the scale and the danger of a potential attack. The popular support possessed by given separatist group is measured by their support. This determines how quickly the activity and supplies will grow and may be attacked through broadcasting propaganda. If the activity, supplies, and support of a terrorist group are all low enough, they will be vulnerable and we will be able to strike their leadership, putting an end to their terrorism. Wow. Accentia up finds uptick in separatist activity. The icy cold frost had descended upon the tranquil little town during the early morning hours. Not even the steadfast bakers of milkmen had started their grueling shifts when a small band of black-clad figures descended upon the quiet streets. Their efforts would spell a very different morning for the generally peaceful townspeople. Along the stark granite walls of the police station and mayoral office, a message of defiance was painted in a horrifying shade of red. A message to be received all around the Union. News of it quickly made its way up the large chain of bureaucracy that defined the Iberian government and landed right in the hands of the security apparatus of the AAS. Elsewhere, similar messages had already begun to appear, where the graffiti sloppily designed posters, posters or other illicit publications. One thing was certain, a wildfire had been set, with opposition to the regime becoming visible on the streets and the walls of Iberia. While some within the Accentia, a little more than useful delinquency in the propaganda, others see a dangerous movement in the need of stamping it out. A small spark may bring down the whole house of cards. Oh, shnikes. Despite being critical for the, keeping the Union together, rooting out terrorism and lessening separatist tensions will doubtless make Franco new enemies across American society. Oh, this is not good. What? Oh, no, no, no. Explode. Oh, man, should I take this stuff? It seems like we should probably take this stuff. Decrease CNT support. Uh, actually, we, uh, let's come over here first. So, we can definitely do the colonial settlers. Which one has colonial settlers? Yeah. Transfer colonial anti-separatist operatives. Native support. Settlers. I don't know. Just by one? Come on. Yeah. All these. Oh, are th these should be probably worth taking, but... Mm, let's go ahead and do transfer colonial anti-separatist operatives first. Let's do that. Oh, this does not look ideal, man. This is totally not ideal. Uh, oh, that takes so long to do. Holy cow. This is not looking bad. The press discovers a bribing. Clearly the documents weren't as concealing as we thought. Oh, okay. 
Somehow, the press managed to sneak out incriminating documents from the Baron archives. The press, being the, the curse of vultures they are, sees an opportunity for a good headline. Under our noses, the corruption scandal has spiraled out of control to the point where we have no chance of suppressing the news. Making the matters worse, the officials involved have been utterly shamed by the public. When well, no one lacks a sense to say much out loud, the attitude is certainly present at any public functions they make appearances at. We'll have to keep them out of the public eye for now and let this all blow over. Oh, uh, that's really, really bad. Well, weaken reformism in the council? Really? Why? Um, regardless, it worsens our stability, which is not good. But Salazar takes a lot of the hits, which is not fair to Salazar. But, if he's going to take some hits, we might as well do other things that could lower Franco's opinion. But, this will also lower his, his stuff over there, too. So, um, okay. We can use this to our advantage, or at least do one more thing here. Mm. So, the foreign leaders, bureaucrats, and silent majority will improve the opinion of Franco. So, let's do the Silent Majority one. Silent Majority... Ah, oh, bureaucrats, we could do that. Silent Majority, businessmen, intellectuals, natives' opinions. Worse than the foreign... Ooh! Ooh! This actually would not be bad to do either. We can decrease their supplies. And the foreign leaders will, like us, maybe eventually a little bit more. Silent Majority, conservative democracy is okay. Increase support. Uh, regional nationalists? They don't really care, do they? know? So, we're gonna do this. Undermine foreign support of terror. That is fine with me. And how long does it- Oh, ten days. Are you kidding me? Blank check operations? Oh my goodness, break them. Popular music songs are loudly emanating from the residential and commercial buildings alike on the outskirts of every major Iberian city. Onlookers are probably thinking they're a bunch of rowdy teenagers, but the truth is much more sinister. Behind those walls, torture chambers are being run at the full scene by the AAS, who are employed employing exotic interrogation methods to gather as much intelligence as they can to gather support for our next move. Every phone is being tapped, while every small hint and every autonomous, anonymous tip is being followed with zeal. If a person is deemed suspicious by intelligence, he is kidnapped by the GAL and secretly brought to these facilities ironically known as Chekas by the agents, the name the Soviet barbarians gave to the premises just like ours during the Reconquista. In a few more days, our Ch Chikas will have gathered enough information to en enable our forces to begin our grand counterterrorism or offensive and nip this evil in the bud. Strike back against separatists? Good. And improve our stability. That'd be good. Uh, so we have eight days to choose this. <sighs> we have nine days. That sucks. That really sucks. You know what? That's okay then. Just go ahead and do this one. That's fine. Oh, Pakistan becomes independent. God dang it. This really sucks. Like, this is not good. Uh, we're still doing okay there. We're getting more infrastructure. Break them. We're still moderately stable, it seems like. Let's see what happens. Cool. God, the funding. Oh, we need more funding. Yeah, it's gonna... Actually, for now... Yeah, everyone likes us, except the colonial settlers. Uh, even though this is gonna worsen the foreign leaders. Oh, they don't really care. Oh, they don't really care. Close it up. Open it back up. Yeah, they still don't really care. Okay. Oh, we could probably do the military, because they still fully lean Franco. So, even if we lower it just by a little bit, that should stall, probably still be okay. Divert special military resources to the AAS. Let's go and do that. Yeah, because they need more resources. That's fine with me. They mostly like us, so. The situation in Timor. During their violent affair through the Pacific, the Japanese managed to capture all sorts of people in the territory. More importantly, they seized the former Portuguese colony Timor. In the face of overwhelming odds, the garrison yielded soldiers and officers alike promptly, promptly imprisoned. We have yet to get a word back from any of them. While recovering the colony is an impossibility, it is far more possible to recover those guarding the port from the incarceration. These British soldiers have been held prisoner for nearly two decades. It is simply unattainable to allow them to remain prisoners any longer. We must liberate them immediately. Currently held in Indonesia, it should be a simple affair to petition the Indo Indonesian government to allow them to come home. Oh boy. Well, regardless, we're going to end the episode here because this has gotten very wonky. But that's okay. That's okay. We kind of like what happens. But let me know. Should I continue doing these combating terrorism in Iberia? It seems like we should. I really don't want to lower the support for Franco because I know that we need him to be very high in support. We currently have, do have a lot of support. But should we do, continue doing, doing this? Please let me know in the comments below. And that's pretty much going to wrap us up for today. This has become very interesting with this whole uh, little game we're playing right here right now. But regardless, hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you all tomorrow as we're going to do our best to keep the union together. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.